Welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil. We have taken control of Rebecca Chambers with the idea of going and retrieving the serum so we can save Chris's life. Chris fought a gigantic snake called the Yawn, and it poisoned him during the battle. So, Rebecca here has to go and save Chris, of course. Now, one of the things I like to do as Rebecca is to go and take out every zombie that I can run across. Because she carries her own stash of ammunition. Not a lot of it. Just a few extra bullets. Nine remaining. Not a lot. But enough that I can down a couple of zombies and not... Uh, and be fine about it. And then the idea behind doing that is those zombies will stay dead. And since it's Rebecca's ammunition and not Chris's, well, we're good. We don't have to worry about uh, wasting our ammo. I think that might have actually been the only zombie I'm going to run across, though, while doing this. Now, where Rebecca is going to find the serum is going to be in that save room that she was hiding in when we first found her. While we're playing as her, we can't access things like the... Uh, Ribbons or anything like that, I don't think. Or the save rooms. The uh, chest there, that's what I mean. That's right, there was another zombie I didn't, I'd forgotten about. I'm surprised Chris hasn't died while she took so long doing this. And I wonder how she knew what kind of serum she needed. I mean, how'd she know what he was injured with? What he had... What had attacked him or anything like that? Eh, man, it's such a shame Richard is dead. He was my co-worker and everything. Oh, he looks like he's dead. You all right? Yeah. What happened? You were bitten by a poisonous snake. Are you okay? Ah, uh, my head is killing me. I think you will be all right because I gave you a shot. But please be careful. You saved my life. I owe you one. The voice acting in this game is horrible! I mean, unbe freaking leaveable I'm glad I could help. Okay, Chris is still almost dead, so I'm gonna go find those health herbs and bring him back.
That's good enough for now. One of the things I find a little bit funny about this game, and I guess it is sort of understandable, understandable given the era that the game existed in, is how bad the acting is, the voice acting. And it's one of the first games that I'd really played that relied heavily on voice actors as opposed to, um, like, text. And, oh, uh, another thing to note is, uh... No, I guess not. Never mind. Uh... Where, where was I? I'm sorry. Uh... It's too dark to see anything. There's a candle, but we can't light that now, can we? The voice acting, that's right. The voice acting is really bad on this. And it was one of the first games to really rely heavily on a voice cast rather than text and dialogue and all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. So I guess it can be a little bit excusable. But, you know, in the end, it is a little bit goofy. And one of the reasons why I think it happened that way had a lot to do with the fact that this is, in fact, a Japanese game. It made very much with a Western audience in mind, or made with the idea of, like, a personification of Western culture. But it is still a Japanese game. And a lot of Japanese games at the time were translated into English by people who were not native speakers of the language. So you get weird things like, Jill, the master of unlocking. Written and translated by people who don't really understand that that is a very awkward thing to say. It doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, you don't have to read through all that. Botany book. They don't really understand, because it's not their native language, that that is a very awkward thing to say. It doesn't make a lot of, a lot of sense. So it ends up getting... finding its way into the game. Whereas in modern, modern times, that's inexcusable. I don't need to go through there. Oh, he's already dead. Another thing is the fact that aside from the dialogue is a little bit hokey to begin with, the game itself has some relatively poor voice actors. <laughs> Now, I, that's something I find a little less than uh, excusable. Because keep in mind that voice acting in video games, although it was new at the time, it's, it still wasn't that good of an excuse to uh, stick crappy voice acting in. Because, how do I put this? Getting a decent voice actor is really not a very expensive thing. You can do it on the low budget because, keep in mind, not every good actor is well known. And a not, an actor that is not well known is not going to fetch a high price. It's not like it was in like a movie production where you want a certain star power to attract people to the movie. In the game, Anybody could be voicing these things. You're probably not even going to notice. It's not like Mass Effect, where they, where they got, like, known actors to voice the characters, because... And they tried to make that as, like, a big draw. This game and most others, you could stick that complete nobody in there. As long as they're competent in their acting ability, it's no big deal. But what they did is they got, like, these really bad actors to come in and voice these characters in it. Whoop, zombie. <laughs> it had just real detrimental to the end of the product. But since this is so bad, it is actually... I think of it as being so bad, it actually is kind of good, like a B-movie, hokey, uh, campy kind of feel to it. So, uh, that's just how what I think, yeah. Everybody has their own opinion. I pushed that in the wrong direction, so I'm going to have to step out here and then turn around and come back in. Mm. 
Maybe not. fish in there. Stupid pad control scheme. <laughs> okay, now you can push this in that direction. Get what was behind. We have shotgun shells. Exactly what I wanted. There's gotta be something else in here. Oh, a researcher's will. More like a diary, I think. Or, oh no, it's a it's kind of a will. Something tells me Alma never received this letter. You know, unless you faxed it. Okay, this was written by a guy named Martin Crackhorn. He was one of the researchers that was working for the pharmaceutical company that was experimenting on some sort of virus. We now know it was a kind of a virus that is responsible for the zombies, and he was infected. Now, this guy seems to have survived an additional month longer than the Keeper that wrote the diary that we had read before a couple episodes ago. That guy died in, uh, that guy turned into a zombie basically around May 19th. This guy says the outbreak happened the month before, so figuring this is, he wrote this will in June. Now the game takes place in July, so at least a month, as far as a month ago, a few of the researchers were still alive. Not that it does them a lot of good now. That guy was infected and chose to commit suicide rather than turn into a zombie. Although I wonder if that's him in the other room there. I also made mention of how it uh, brought up the same thing that we had basically read about in the Keeper's Diary, how the virus, when it infects you, starts screwing with your, with your uh, brain function and turning you into a kind of a simpleton. And then he said he had forgotten things about this Alma. Ooh, a lighter. He had forgotten things about this Alma one, and that well, saddened him, I guess, as you think it would. Okay, I've got everything I need here. There is a zombie off in that direction. I'm wondering if I should do something about it, if I should kill it, or not. Yes, I think I just made that decision for myself. That really was a bad idea. Okay, I get to show you what happens when you die! There we go. You are dead. Now, I'm not going to end the game there. I'm going to be uh, right back. Okay, I'm back. I came back and I killed that zombie, so now I have free access through here. Now, what is in here? Was it really worth it for me doing this? Let's find out. Wood is in the stove. Paper is on the wall. Hmm. wonder if we light a fire here, something will happen. Map of the second floor? Awesome! I wonder what the hell it was doing there. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, but whatever. Use that green herb right away. There's another door over here we don't have a key for. Carving of a helmet. We're going to have to get the helmet key a little bit later.
I actually got one more thing I want to do before I bring this episode to an end. Remember, I have been collecting the crests up until this point. And, well, there are, I believe, four crests that we need to collect. And there's one more that I want to pick up before I end this game. And so in the next episode, I can just collect them all and insert them into where they need to go. And that is going to be in this room here. Look at what we have here. You have... The crest is inside of here. But, look, we got a vent here. And there's a switch on the floor. And a vent here. Hmm. I'm gonna cover these vents over... You know, just a hunch. Cover these vents over with these little statues here. So, you know, in case something decides to come, you know, steaming out of there, I'm not going to die as a result of it. I think that does it. Awesome! Suncrest. I wonder what happens if I were to move one of these. Ah, oh, shit. That's not good. Now, that was the last crest I needed to collect. There's one more, but I'm going to be grabbing that at the beginning of the next episode. So I'm going to bring this episode to a close, and then we will head over and see what we need to do with all these crests. So, see you next time.